All right. I'm gonna make this video. This is the um, beginning of the uh, rear disc brake brake line installation part. So, well, what I'm gonna go over is whenever you're putting this rear disc brake kit in your heavy car, this is in case your car is not assembled. You know, you're building the car, or maybe you have it taken apart, you redid your whole axle. Make 100% sure you have your spring in there. If you're gonna run your ladder bars, make sure all of this stuff is in here before you start putting your brake lines in. Because you're gonna have to go through all of this anyway and blow them out and clean them out. And the last thing you wanna do is to finish them and then have to go back and your spring was in the way because what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to put a little perch here for the rear disc brakes. But this cape, this brake steel line, we're gonna reflare it and change the nut over here to, to convert it to the stop, modify it where it stops. So this is the first part. Since we're down here, if you're running an aftermarket, uh, which I would go ahead and suggest, go ahead and buy this. This is badass. Looks badass, feels badass, makes you think you're more badass. But the problem you have is this three-way thing right here. It eliminates the place to put it. So that's what I'm gonna show you real quick. No. Man. Oh, okay. Well, this kit had this mysterious long bolt in it and I couldn't understand what it was and it had a lot of extra washers with it. So I came up with the idea because don't do like a lot of people in cars do and just fucking tie strap this shit to something. That is bullshit. If you're in the cars and you want to brag about being a car guy, don't leave this hanging. If you, if you leave this hanging or have ever left this hanging, you're a dumbass. I don't give a... I don't care what anybody says. That's stupid. So they use this longer bolt that came with the kit. And we're gonna cut this to fix, to fix, I mean to finish it off, but we're just trying to mock something up right here where you can uh, relocate this. This is aluminum, it's just a little thin thing, I don't know what that is, a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, some bracket, I don't even know where the bracket came from, I don't know what it is, I don't care. Yeah, mock something up like that screw it in there and make sure that screw bottom's out so you can torque because you have to torque these to 25 pounds which I don't have a way to torque them so I gotta go buy some stupid socket with a quarter inch allen thing on it. Gotta mop that up and see it says USA there don't cover that up if you're an American especially with all this ISIS stuff going on Fuck ISIS. So anyway, you're gonna put that on there like that and you're gonna kind of mark it where it, you know, somewhere close. I already have it marked right there. I'm gonna center punch it, I'm gonna drill a hole. So that's just an idea. We're gonna cut it off and round it off, you know, smoothing it up where this looks professional. It's, well, it looks better than zip tied. So, alright. Alright. <laughs> This part of the video, I'm going to go over the e-brake adjustment, and uh, we're going to we're going to attempt to uh, establish a starting point on where we're going to co connect our steel line to our uh, rubber uh, hose that comes with the rear disc brakes. So I apologize for the music. I think that mosquitoes don't like electronica indie music so seems to be keeping them away right now and there's a fan blowing so I'm sorry inspect your lines blow these out make sure that the uh, the fitting on the line fits your new brake line or brake hose and these do Uh, blow these 
these lines out, make sure they are not clogged, because they will be clogged. <laughs> so this is part two, 70 Chevelle, rear disc brakes, Eldorado calipers, and now we're going over uh, the e-brake e and a starting point to do this, to do the rear brake lines. You're gonna need a flaring tool. I found this in the car a long time ago, but we're gonna have to cut. Where's my brake? All right, we'll, we'll start by just kind of mocking it up to, to give you an idea. You're gonna get your brake hose on there first. Make sure you put it on there like this. And uh, yeah, I'll put it on upside down. Kind of get a feel of the floppiness. It's gonna go down to up. So. Just get it on there for right now. Uh, now the e-brake, you're going to need your lube, uh, thrust, whatever plastic thing in this seal, whatever it's called, I don't know, your nut, your lever. Now in the other video I referred to it as right hand, left hand. There is no such thing. They are identical, so it's that logic does not apply. It's in and out, so make sure that the caliper is can move on there slide around make sure all this is bolted up you're gonna run it in and make sure it's in while you're adjusting all of this but whenever you you got it all set up you're gonna run it out outward until it comes up like that when it sticks out like that you're ready to adjust the e-brake now you may need to like hook it and crank it and crank it until it tightens up. So what I've already done is I've bolted my rotor down with two lug nuts and bolted it down to the axle. You need to do that while you're adjusting it like this. And you may have to, like I said, just clamp it a couple of times and ratchet forward just, just to snug it up. And then you're going to try to find a sweet spot on here. I've already done it where it, it kind of lines up perfectly right there. Yeah, see it's sweet spot right there. Now you're going to make sure you can turn this. If you can't turn this, I don't know. You need to be able to turn it a little bit at least. And you're going to practice your e-brake. So turning it, just apply a little bit of baby pressure. Boom, it's locked. That's all it takes, man. It, it, that thing is locked. I swear it wouldn't roll like that. So let off of it. Push it again, clamp it while you're turning it, boom, locked. And that's how it works, man. Just, just that little bit is locked. So make sure it's not staying locked. Ah, see, I can't turn it. Off, and turn it, locked, and a little bit. But it's gonna be more than that. Unlocked, boom, you can turn it. Get your lubricating ring, it only goes on there one way. Make sure you have it on there the right way. Put that in position. Put that back on there. Put that back on there, and your e brake is ready to go. Tighten that nut down. Since it has that rubber seal, I can't really speak of the torque, so you're going to have to figure that out on your own. I'm just going to kind of run it a little tight, but I don't know, man. You're going to have to figure that out. Oops, I got the wrong grid. God dang, it's a fucking metric piece of shit. Whatever. Ah, pretty tight. Check it. Spin it. Clamp it. Yeah, it's working. Ah. Okay, hold on. Maybe you don't want to tighten this too tight. There, just play with it, but you don't want it too tight because it's gonna it's not gonna wanna release. Okay. 
whatever, figure that out. I don't, don't, don't quote me on this part. Now we're gonna put the spring back in. Remember the spring, you're gonna have to put a cable through there, so figure out which way is gonna allow that cable to go through there. A lot easier to put that spring on when it's in the car. <laughs> Alright, that's ready to go, man. That, ah, that's nice. That's fancy. Now, the part where... Oh yeah, make sure you have everything in here. This ugly spring, sorry, I, I, I might lower the car, but this is just a reference point. It's a stock 69 Chevelle spring. Make sure you have your bumpers, I'm running ladder bars. Make sure you have all the stuff you're going to run before you start adjusting this line or modifying it. So mine, I want it to be, I actually am going to weld it to this, so I was going to weld it somewhere here, but I'm going to go ahead and weld it about right there. Of course, you can only, you got this protection thing on here, so you can only cut it, reflare it, and you're only going to be able to cut it, reflare it once, so you're going to have to find a sweet spot in there. Um, But you, you have to remember your your caliper is going to be sliding back and forth a little bit. So you don't want to 90 this or, or do anything stupid. It needs to just kind of... <laughs> yeah, I was going to pull a Peter Griffin there. but And do it for five minutes. But anyway, I found my sweet spot about right there. I could... Put it in there and clamp it but i don't know these ladder bars have been a bitch so i'm just gonna weld it right here and i hope you can hope you can see all of this but what's going on now i'm gonna go ahead and put the emergency brake cable in i'm not gonna be able to show you how to put it on the car but you're gonna have to do it like this anyway so can't show you how to put it on the car because I don't have any other, any other, God dang it, can't show you how to put it on the car because the car don't have any parts on it, first of all there's a little clip on here, take it off, be careful, they break and disappear, uh, you're going to take the spring back off, oh I love this spring, nothing oh, stupid about it at all it's just so pleasant knee brake adjusted and on the other side if you have a knee brake and you're adjusting it all right i'm gonna have to go over this if you have a knee brake and you're adjusting it and let's say whenever you run it out See, right now it's adjusted that's it that's tight that's compressing but let's say you have one that when you that, that's tight right here or right here and then you can compress it but you have to push it all the way back so it doesn't compress until right here so you got all this play in it all right so let you know see okay so this one tightens right there that's e-brake is locked so what I'm talking about is if you have one where it, it, it's like right here and it wants to lock right here so you have all this play in it what you do in that case is that's the tool they sell it's a little square box a little Hellraiser cube and what you want to do is you want to take the caliper back off and you'll have these notches that the that the tab on the brake pad fits in and what you want to do is outward away from the caliper twist it out one notch one notch away out out put the caliper back on and then you should tighten it up and it'll it'll go from having this play one notch out 
will bring that play out and you should find the sweet spot. But that's that's if you you know if you're having too much play right here. And uh, sorry I couldn't make a video on that. I was doing the other side. Yeah, sorry about all that waste of time just now. <sighs> Alright, so springs out. This is gonna have to go through your spring, so. Okay, that's fine. Put it all the way in. Go ahead and put the clip back on. Damn, this bitch. Dude, everything on this car is like so stupid. Oh, there you go. Figure out how to get that clip back in. Alright, it then. Alright, spring back in. And this is going to go through here, so you got to make sure this part of the spring. Like it's gonna go like through there so you want to figure out how to put that spring on there where uh so there you go through here boom and now it's ready to be adjusted that's your e-brakes now, here's the point of the video. You can see right here, I customized that tab. I just went ahead and welded it, and that was a bitch. Oh my God, that was such a bitch to do that. <sighs> anyway, got our hose here. Now we got something that we can work with. See, that's awesome now. And this clip's gonna go in there. Don't tighten none of this stuff down, but it's loose. It's supposed to fit on there like this. It's loose, so I'm gonna have to put a washer on there. You figure a way out, but you, this is supposed to bang in, bang in there real hard with the hammer. So I'm gonna put a little thin washer right there uh, when I'm done with it. But for right now, don't put it in there like that. I guess you could. No, it needs to be tight and it needs to be in there like that, or like this. So right now we're going to I'm gonna modify this line for you and show you how to do it. So you need to, if you have this right here, this winding, you need to grind it off and be careful. And then uh, you need to mark it exactly where you want to flare it. So you got you got stuff to bend right here. So let's just we want our flare right there. All right. Was 18 man I could just freaking get through all this crap and now I'm 31 and I get to see I see what all the old folks were talking about. Alright mark I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it you a little pipe cutter like this make sure you have this you're gonna want to clean it they should have cheap pipe cutters at O'Reilly there's a little red one they sell. Tighten it as you turn around, but don't tighten it too much. Now I've done this before, so I kind of know what I'm doing, but you double, triple, and whatever quadruple check this shit. And once you cut this line, man, that's it. You're gonna have to go to the store and buy one, and it ain't gonna be, it ain't gonna be nothing like this one. You're gonna have all kinds of problems. See the little triangle? I hope I can flare this. See, now what you're going to do, this is the other line, you're going to take that piece you cut off and you need to get this off. You need because you're going to reuse it. So, alright, got it off. Put it back on over the line. Damn, why do I need pliers again? Shit. 
Alright. Yeah. Alright. Get the old one back on there. Make sure it fits your line, of course. I've already checked this one, but make damn sure it fits there because you're going to go have to buy another one. Fits. Now we're going to flare it. Flare tool. I think these are like, you can get these at Harbor Freight. I don't know, this is a good one. I found it in a truck. Probably some dumbass that never knew what it was. He knew it was something though, to save it, but never knew what it did. All right, hopefully it's got one on there for it. You're just gonna do like that. I'm not really sure, I'm not a professional flarer. But let's just, we're just gonna try it like that. So. I think it pushes it down uh, as far as it goes anyways. I've used these tools, this tool before, it works really good. Even if it doesn't flare it where it looks perfect, it, it, it starts it and it eventually works. So get you a tool like this. I'm gonna put it on there. It should it should work, but so you can see how it's been. I didn't realize it was anyway, whatever man. Just like I said, if it's not right, I'll i I'll redo it later, but if it starts leaking, but it's probably gonna be okay. Anyway. Get your line back in there. Get your line back in the top. Alright. Now it should be pretty good. Alright. Put that in there. It should, damn it. See, the real ones, they have something that keeps them... Oh, I get, it's got a nut on there, whatever. Now, remember the washer. I had a washer somewhere, but this is supposed to be like here, and it's supposed to clamp it solid, and then you're going to run this. That should work. Well, any, either way, you got rear, you got freaking badass emergency brakes. So, <laughs> anyway, remember washer. This thing doesn't want to stay in place. It's, that's just how it came. But it's gonna be like that. And there you go, man. That's a really good idea. How you want your oh, straighten this out. You don't, you don't want this at a ninety. You want it about like something like that. But anyway, you know, and you're gonna move this to about right here where it hits. And, uh, yeah, man, that looks pretty badass. Um, all right, next I'm going to do the uh, relocating the hose that splits the top. Okay, for our next task, we have done our um, modified uh, brake line, and now we're going to connect to this little piece up here, this little top piece. And this is a new one. Make sure you already have it all in there. Uh, this one's already ready. You're going to do one side first and this is a little thing I did to to relocate this because when you buy these aftermarket covers uh, this is the Moser 12 bolt cover uh, 70 Chevelle whatever it's like this thick and this thick or whatever and it it messes you up right here so I'm gonna show you what I've done and you can copy me and I ain't gonna be mad at you um, this is the bracket and I'm gonna put it together for you show you a modification so go ahead and get that in there Ooh, something up. Piece of shit. all right now what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to make you something that looks like this this is just like 16th inch aluminum um, I don't know about an inch almost two inches tall make you a little piece like this there are five sixteenths holes drilled in it because these use five sixteenths bolts when you buy this cover it comes with a mysteriously long bolt so what I've figured already was that it's three washers 
that's going to stick out past this cover. So watch what I'm going to do here. And I had to make this. It didn't come with this. So you're going to have to make this. Find the prettiest side to go up. Eh, they're both pretty. Find your amount of washers that's going to bottom it out. Stick that in there. Because you have to torque these to 25 pounds, so you have to make sure that the washers are gonna bottom bottom out and that this plate isn't over your cover. You don't want to mar it up. And don't cover this USA up or I'm gonna kick your ass. Alright, now since this this cover is like that fat. This wouldn't normally be right here. It would be way back there. So we're gonna get you a five sixteenths bolt. I don't know. It's like three inches long. Grade eight, whatever. Don't matter. Uh, and I figured that, that the plate cover was this thick, three five sixteenths nuts. So just you're gonna use that as a spacer. So put that on there. Run your three nuts down. Fucking zip tie stuff because they're lazy. And then they talk about what a badass car they have. Your car's a piece of shit if you're zip tying stuff like that. That's why people like stock. It's not because stock is better, it's because these stupid motherfuckers, they modify every fucking thing in the whole car. And then, you know, when they're trying to get it to work right, nothing works because everything's been modified, like what I'm doing right here. But I'm not taking pride in this. I mean, I'm just saying that there's a there's an okay way to modify it. So if somebody bought this car, they might just think they might say it looks good enough. Just leave it, you know. So my theory is that if you're going to modify it, it better look better than stock or cooler or more interesting than stock. Alright, so it looks pretty freaking good, man. It doesn't look cheap, it doesn't look stupid. So if you looked under this car and you've seen that, it doesn't look too bad. Anyway, just an idea on how to modify that. Moser, ladder bar, or this brakes. Alright, so it's 9 o'clock on a Saturday night and I'm done. Well, done with the majority of it. Got the brake lines ran, got the this brakes in place, got the wheels on the car. Uh, now I'm gonna buy a new master cylinder and uh, you know start trying to figure out if got any leaks if I have to redo any of those uh, that one questionable flare that I made. Anyway, I made this last part. Um, I am kind of disappointed. I found those uh, rear springs out of a real uh, original 69. Uh, just a two-door small block car, whatever, Chevelle. So I think my experience with these springs is they always sit low on the back, but I'm gonna show you, just in case you're doing a similar job like mine, what ended up happening with the 20. Uh, it sits pretty high, so. I'll just bring the light out so you can see it. It sits up really, 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 really high in the back. Uh, of course, that's a big tire. It's really not that big. It's 28 and a half inches tall. It's a, uh, I'll repeat myself. It's a 20 by 10, 5.75 of backspacing. But it's really running like 5 point, I would say 5.4 or something of backspacing because, uh, because of the uh, disc brake rotor is like, it's, it's bigger than a quarter inch, so I don't know, three sixteenths. I mean, five sixteenths, I don't know, whatever. But anyway, it's a 305, 35, 20, uh, 28 and a half inch tall tire. It's supposed to be 12, I think 12 inches wide. 
But anyway, just making this last part to show you that I'm gonna I'm probably gonna lower it three inches, but I'm gonna see what they have out there, two and a half or three inches, but I know it's gonna be a bunch of shit I'm trying to figure these back springs out. But anyway, see a lot of random ladder bars. See how that this breaks. Looks pretty cool, even though those are supposed to be the cheaper, the cheaper uh, kind. You know, for for a normal person, that looks pretty fancy. Anyway, goodbye.